Good morning. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This morning we have two readings. First is from Galatians 3. Uh, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There's no longer Jew or Greek. There's no longer slave or free. There's no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. And the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. And as he stepped out on the land, a man of the city who had demons met him for a long time. He had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of them, out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them back to go into the abyss. Now there was on the hillside a large herd of swine that was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd of swine rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. The people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. And the man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning, friends. Today is Juneteenth, June the 19th. Now picture you are captured, unable to break free. No matter how much you struggle or put up a fight, there is nothing you can do to be free. The garrison demoniac was such a person. He was held by powers and entities beyond our comprehension or sensibilities. In our modern minds, you might ascribe these to mental health issues, but whatever you see these to be, he was bound and controlled by a legion of things holding him in horrible conditions. Naked living amongst the tombs, and chained and shackled, then tortured to wreck his body, escaping to wreak havoc on his heart and mind and soul. He was enslaved to a life beyond our worst nightmares. We would not wish this on our worst enemy, and yet here he was. And Jesus arrives, and the powers that control him urge him to confront Jesus. This one enslaved to these powers is horrifying and sad, but for me, the saddest part of the story are the Gerasenes, the ones living in this land. They knew the one possessed, and they knew that he was chained, changed and set free. Listen again to their response to this miraculous act of freedom. The people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. 
that all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. Friends, Jesus is about freedom and inviting people to health and wholeness. He was 2,000 years ago, and he is to this day. Still, to this day, Jesus is about setting us free. He heals the brokenhearted and the damaged. He empowers those ensnared by addiction and hate and bigotry and provides a path to love and grace and wholeness. He can rid us of a legion of demons if we but would only let him. I've quoted this poem before, but it still speaks so profoundly to my soul. It's a simple four-line poem from the 17th century. The Best of Rooms by the English poet Robert Herrick. Christ, he requires still wheresoe'er he comes to feed or lodge to have the best of rooms. Give him the choice, grant him the nobler part of all the house, the best of all is the heart. Friends, we are either all inviting Jesus in or we are sending him away each and every day. If he comes in, do we, like Herrick say, to, and as it says in his poem, give him the best of rooms, or do we set him in the corner, just a mere accoutrement? If we invite him in and give him charge of the house, then he has his way, and everything, absolutely everything, is in his sway. We are seeking freedom for those ensnared and enslaved, or we are not. For freedom, Christ has set us free, Paul says in Galatians, and that is not only in the spiritual realm. Today is the day of a celebration of physical freedom in our country, declared a national holiday this last year. July 4th is our independence, politically speaking, and worthy of honor and celebration. And today is a newly established holiday, and some of you may have even heard of it. Today is Juneteenth. I'm going to read from Private President Biden's proclamation last year. On June 19, 1865, nearly nine decades after our nation's founding, and more than two years after President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, enslaved Americans in Galveston, Texas, finally received word that they were free from bondage. As those who were formerly enslaved were recognized for the first time as citizens, black Americans came to commemorate Juneteenth with celebrations across the country, building new lives and a new tradition that we honor today. In its celebration of freedom, Juneteenth is a day that should be recognized by all Americans. And that is why I am proud to have consecrated Juneteenth as our newest national holiday. Juneteenth is a day of profound weight and power. A day in which we remember the moral stain and terrible toll of slavery on our country. What I've long called America's original sin a long legacy of systemic racism, inequality, and inhumanity. But it is a day that also reminds us of our incredible capacity to heal, hope, and emerge from our darkest moments with purpose and resolve. As I said on the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre, great nations don't ignore the most painful chapters of their past. Great nations confront them. We come to terms with them. On Juneteenth, we recommit ourselves to the work of equity, equality, and justice. And we celebrate the centuries of struggle, courage, and hope that have brought us to this time of progress and possibility. That work has been led through our history by abolition, abolitionists and educators, civil rights advocates and lawyers, courageous activists and trade unionists, public officials and everyday Americans who have helped make our real the ideals of our founding documents for all. There's still more work to do. As we emerge from the long dark winter of the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, racial equity remains at the heart of our efforts to vaccinate the nation and beat the virus. We must recognize that black Americans, among other people of color, have shouldered a disproportionate burden of loss while also carrying through disproportionately as essential workers and healthcare providers on the front lines of the crisis. Psalm 30 proclaims that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And Juneteenth marks both the long, hard night of slavery and discrimination, and the promise of a brighter morning to come. 
Together, we will lay the roots of real and lasting justice so that we can become the extraordinary country that was promised to all Americans. Juneteenth not only commemorates the past, it calls us to action today. Those were the words of President Biden last year when he inaugurated Juneteenth. Now, any differences we see between ourselves and anyone else is gone in Christ. As we read this morning, there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. We are all one in Christ. All those old lines and any new ones are erased in Christ. Friends, I also see a lot of parallels between Juneteenth and our gospel reading today. Now, most of us are not the demoniac, enslaved, and tormented. We have a choice in how we respond when God is at work. Do we celebrate and revel in the work of God, bringing all God's children to freedom and hope? Or do we ask Jesus, however politely, just to go away? and let us delude ourselves in the status quo? Do we mourn the economic loss of the swine and put our personal loss over the freedom of another soul? Is Jesus in charge of our house, or is he a mute image adorning our home, giving us comfort instead of true freedom? This country is still plagued by demons. Just read the headlines any day of the week. But we think that our way is better than God's way, we, like the Gerasenes, asked Jesus to mind his own business, and we sent him away. It terrifies me that so often, what is so often done in Jesus' name and proclaimed as the way of Jesus, it bears no resemblance to the Jesus of the Gospels or his message. A friend of the church gave us this Juneteenth flag so that we can remember the act of liberation and freedom which we celebrate in our faith as well as in our country. The red, white, and blue, red, white, and blue is uh, there representing our nation. And the arc is the curving like a new horizon. It's not a straight line. We're always moving forward. And the star is from the Texas flag where the enslaved of Galveston finally learned their, to, to learn two years too late of their freedom. And the 12 pointed star is a nova, a new star of freedom being born. The date is when freedom was fully and finally declared. I wrote a long thank you note for this gift. I'm a good Episcopalian, but it helps us remind, to be reminded of the freedom for all God's children. It's often uncomfortable when we bring up hard issues from the past, and I recognize and honor it. Growing up, I often ignored anything about the Civil War because of my discomfort with the issues of slavery and war. I avoided the blue and gray miniseries and in my married life, it took me decades after its premiere to finally watch Ken Burns' Civil War. But avoiding it didn't make it go away. I knew nothing, and if history has taught us anything, if we do not learn our history, we are doomed to repeat it. Today, I celebrate that chattel slavery was finally ended on June the 19th, 1865. And today, I grieve that it took two and a half years for them to get the news. That's a contradiction, and most big things are. And as we step into the hard truths, may we hold Christ's hand as he leads us to a better place. In my travels exploring and learning about the past through the Triangle of Hope, I learned of this symbol from the Ashanti tribe of Ghana, Sankofa. It's a goose reaching back and getting an egg from its back. That's what it is, but what it means is to keep moving forward and not let go of the treasures of your past. And that's what I see us doing with Juneteenth honoring the glorious day of liberty and committing ourselves to getting to a better place, the place which God intended. Let us pray today a blessing for June, Juneteenth. Almighty God, you rescued your people from slavery in Egypt, and throughout the ages you have never failed to hear the cries of the captives. We remember before, our sister, before you our sisters and brothers in Galveston, Texas, who on this day received the glad tidings of their emancipation. Forgive us for the many grave sins that have delayed that liberating word and anoint us with your spirit to bring good news to the poor and to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of your favor. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessings be upon you this day, and thank you for celebrating with us this day of freedom, this day of celebration, this Juneteenth. Amen. And God bless.